Alright, so today we're going to talk about the Lewis relation um, and derive how that is, how that comes about. So, to get to the Lewis relation, we have to look at the relationship between the Nusselt number and the Sherwood number. So, the Nusselt number. Um, has an equation in the form of the constant a times the Reynolds number raised to the constant b um, times the Prandtl number raised to the constant c. Similarly, the Sherwood number has is equal to the constant a times the Reynolds number raised to the constant b times the Schmidt number raised to the constant c. Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide these two equations, and then a Reynolds number raised to the b cancels out from both, and we're left with the Prandtl number over the Schmidt number. Now that is going to be equal to dAB, or the diffusivity, over alpha, where alpha is equal to k the thermal conductivity over rho cp, the density, the volumetric heat capacity. Now, dAB over um, alpha will be equal to 1 over the Lewis number. Now, 1 over the Lewis number will be equal to the volumetric heat capacity times the diffusivity over the thermal conductivity. Now, when we're looking at the concept of moist air, so in terms of the wet bulb um, scenario, we're at the interface of that wet bulb, you'll have moist air this is oops, this becomes relatively one now if this is relatively one we can then isolate the diffusivity over the thermal conductivity is equal to one over the volumetric heat capacity now, what we're trying to do to get the Lewis relationship is we're looking at the right-hand side of these equations, and we're simplifying it. And then we'll look at the right-hand side, or the left right-hand side, and then we'll look at the left-hand side of the equation and simplify that. So we know that the Nusselt number is equal to h times, or the heat transfer coefficient times the diameter over the um, what was it? Therm thermal conductivity, where the Sherwood number is equal to the mass transfer coefficient times the diameter over the diffusivity from A to B. Now, we divide the two, and the diameters cancel out, and we are left with the heat transfer coefficient times the diffusivity over the thermal conductivity times the mass transfer coefficient. Now we have our left hand side of the equation and our right hand side of the equation here. 1 over the Lewis number equals that. So we write out the expression, the heat transfer coefficient times the diffusivity over thermal conductivity times the mass transfer coefficient is equal to uh, the volumetric heat capacity times the diffusivity over the thermal conductivity. Now we already defined up here that the thermal con or the diffusivity over the thermal conductivity is 1 over the volumetric heat capacity. If we look, we have that right here and right 
here. So we can rewrite this equation as the heat transfer coefficient over the mass transfer coefficient times 1 over the volumetric heat capacity is equal to the volumetric heat capacity divided by the volumetric heat capacity. We're just substituting 1 over the volumetric heat capacity for dAB over K. So now that we have this, this cancels out and we can move that over to where we get the heat transfer coefficient over the mass transfer coefficient is equal to the volumetric heat capacity. And that right there is the loose relation. In the instance of a wet bulb where you have moist air and we can assume that 1 over the Lewis number is relatively 1. So now we're going to further explain the Lewis relation in the sense of a wet bulb or moist air um, scenario. So the scenario that we're going to look at is a jogger's running and they're sweating. Um, and for the simplicity, let's just say the sweat is completely water. Now as they run, that sweat is going to evaporate and cool the jogger down, as well as the water molecules are going to transfer into the air. So we're going to look at the loose relationship in that scenario, um, which would be a wet bulb scenario. Um, so what is happening, we have the mass transfer, so basically taking that scenario and putting symbols to that. So we have, in this scenario, we have some mass transfer occurring we have concentrations of the water um, on the surface and in the air. Um, now this here will be the transfer from uh, liquid water to vapor water. Um, and we also need a heat of vaporization for that transfer. Now if we say this um, term is in units of joules per kilogram, then we will also need the molecular weight of water. Now, in this scenario we have mass transfer and heat transfer occurring at once. The heat is being transferred um, from the person to the air, or the air to the person, as well as the water vapor, or the liquid water moving to water vapor as the sweat evaporates. So this has to be equal to the heat transfer coefficient times the difference from the temperature of the air to the temperature on the surface. So we um, can rewrite the molar concentration of the water as the partial pressure of the water at the surface divided by the gas constant R times the temperature at the surface. And we also can do that as well to the concentration in the air, um, which would be partial pressure of the water in the air over the air temperature. Alright. And then we also said that we are going to be using the Lewis relation, so we know that um, the heat transfer coefficient over the mass transfer coefficient is equal to the volumetric heat capacity, because we can divide both sides by the mass transfer coefficient and get this. And then we also know that the density we can rewrite as the total pressure over gas constant times the average temperature. So now we can rewrite this expression um, given these variables. So we can, like I said, divide the mass transfer coefficient across and then we can substitute um, this 
the density in as well to this one. So we will have the heat of vaporization times the molecular weight times the difference in concentrations, which we can write as the partial pressures over RT. is equal to uh, the volumetric heat capacity due to the Lewis relationship. Um, and then for this, the density and the volumetric heat capacity, we're going to substitute the pressure total over our T average. Um, so that's going to be the total pressure over our T average times the heat capacity times the difference from the air to the surface. Now, like I said, this is this expression here is the transfer from liquid water to liquid vapor, and this here is the heat flux um, supplied from the air to the surface. So that's what we have here and here written in different terms. Now, if we note that the temperature of the surface is relatively the same as the temperature of the air, which is also relatively equal to the average temperature, so we can make this assumption, we now can cancel out RT all across the equation, and we are left with the heat or the heat of vaporization times the molecular weight of water multiplied by the difference in partial pressures from the surface to the air is equal to the total pressure times the heat capacity multiplied by the difference from the temperature of the air in the water in the surface. So this here is the equation that we want for a wet bulb scenario, which will allow us to determine the temperature difference as well as the mass and heat transfer in the scenario of a jogger running when the their sweat is evaporating into the air. Alright, so now we're going to look at a cooling tower where air is being blown up through the tower and hot water is being trickled down and cooling as it moves down. And we want to look at the mass and heat transfer through that column. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the... Uh, so as you can see, we set this up to where the uh, z in the positive direction is going down the column, and when z equals zero, that's at the top of the column. And we designated a area of this column as A that has the distance of dz. So what we want to first look at is the water vapor moving through uh, through that section A. So in order to do that, in order to do that, we're going to write out this equation. Prove A G, where A is the area of the complete column, G is the gas or the air inlet flow over the molecular weight times the mole fraction. And we are going to set that equal to negative. So this negative is just denoting the direction. So the air is moving up the column, just going in the negative z direction. So we negative the mass transfer coefficient times the concentration of the water at the surface minus the concentration of the water in the air. Um, then in order 
order to get this section, we will multiply that by a the area section, and then the area of the column times dz. Now, we are going to define this section of the equation as nw, the molar flux of water, which will be equal to the mass concentration times, now it will be the concentration of the surface minus the concentration of the air. Now this can be rewritten as the partial pressure of water that is saturated at the temperature of the water divided by RT. And then in order to get the concentration of the air in the same term, it will be the um, mole fraction times the total pressure divided by RT. Now we'll write this part of the equation down several, several times, so we just denote that as NW. So now we can write that the area of the column times the flow rate of the air over the molecular weight times uh, dy over dz is equal to negative nw, the section area times the area of the column. And as you can see, the area of the column cancels out, and we get dy over dz, which is the mole fraction of the water as it moves through the column, is going to be equal to a negative m, er, yeah, negative a, the area section times the molecular weight over the air flow rate, um, times that nw expression. So that will be our first differential equation for when we go to code. Now, the next thing that we were looking for is the temperature of the water and the air throughout the column. So we want to find we want to find the temperature of the water throughout the column, so d, d, dtw over dz, and we also want to find the temperature of the air throughout the column, which um, we will denote as dtg over dz. So in order to do that, we're going to look at the changes in the enthalpy of the water. Now, we also can note that the difference from the derivatives for the enthalpy of water and the enthalpy of air is equal to zero, meaning that the enthalpy of water is equal to the enthalpy of air. So what we're first going to do is we want to find the enthalpy of the water. And we can find that by uh, multiplying the area of the column times the flow rate of the water, L, times the specific heat of the water, we'll denote that as Cl, and then now times the temperature of the water, which we'll denote as dt sub w. And now we can write this as equal to the area section times the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the difference between the temperature of the air minus the temperature of the water. And then we're going to subtract the uh, heat of vaporization times NW. Oh, I forgot. So this term here, in order to get this heat, the heat transfer within the column, we have to multiply that by the area of the column times dz. Uh, then we'll minus the heat. Uh, heat of vaporization 
times the NW of the multiply that by the area section times the area of the column times DZ and that will be the enthalpy of the water now we want to isolate um, this term here DW over or DT over DZ so looking at this term we can determine or we can cancel out the area of the column seeing as it is in every term so then now we just isolate this one so we get the temperature of the water through the column D, DT DZ of the water is equal to the section area divided by the flow rate of the water times the specific heat of that water multiplied by the heat transfer coefficient times the difference in the temperature of the air minus the temperature of the water minus the heat of vaporization times the term NW and that will be our second differential equation that we will use when we code. Now, the next step is to find the enthalpy of the air. So we already know that the enthalpy of the air is equal to the enthalpy of the water, meaning that our left-hand side for the air will be equal to this right-hand side. So, the enthalpy of the air is equal to the area of the column times the flow rate of the air times the specific heat of the air um, times the dt of the air the temperature of the air and that will be equal to this right hand side of the equation which will be the area section times the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the temperature difference from the air to the water um, times the area times DZ minus the heat of vaporization times NW times the area section times the area of the column times DZ and that will be the enthalpy of the air. Now again we have the area of the column in every term so we can cancel that out. Oh, actually I wrote that wrong. That is actually the enthalpy of the air, I just, or the water, I just rewrote that. So the, that's right, the enthalpy of the air is equal to, so it'll be um, the area of the column times the flow rate times the specific heat times the temperature of the air and then that will be plus the area times the um, heat of vaporization times the flow rate of the air over the molecular weight and that will be multiplied by the mole fraction so this is our left hand side equation and that will be equal to the area section times the heat transfer coefficient times the difference in temperatures of the air and the temperatures of the water times the area of the column times DZ minus the heat of vaporization times NW times the area section times the area of the column times dz. Now we can see that we have the area of the column in every term so we can cancel that out but then we can also simplify um, and take the derivatives of what we are looking for. So that will be this expression becomes the area of the column, or no, area of the column is gone. So this expression now becomes the air flow rate times the specific heat of the air times the 
derivative of the temperature of the air plus the heat of vaporization times the air flow rate over the molecular weight times the derivative of the mole fraction dy dz will be equal to the area section times the heat of vaporization multiplied by the te temperature difference from the air and the water multiplied by um, actually subtracted by the heat of vaporization times the NW times A. So now we have this bottom expression. And as you can see, because this term here is actually this, which is the area section times the molecular weight over G times the NW term that we defined, this whole expression here cancels out with this expression here. And then we can solve for this um, dt over dz. Now, we can say that the dt over dz of the air is equal to the area section times the heat transfer coefficient divided by the air flow rate times the specific heat of the air multiplied by the temperature difference between the air and the water. And that is the third differential, differential equation. So next we are going to go on and uh, code these in order to plot dy over dz and dt of the water over dz as well as dt of the air over dz. So we'll use this equation, this equation, and this equation in our code to determine how the temperature of the water and the temperature of the air changes throughout this column as well as the mole fraction of the air and the water. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to code the problem with the cooling tower with hot water trickling down and air blowing up through the tower. And we're going to determine the uh, mole fraction, temperature of the water, and temperature of the gas. So first things first, we're going to import numpy as np, then from plotly dot subplots import make subplots and then um, we're going to import er, import plotly dot io as pio and then pio dot templates and this is to just edit the graph And then we will also be using initial value problem uh, to solve differential equations. So from um, scipy dot integrate import solve IVP. And then we'll also use the root function. So from scipy dot integrate. import root what did I do? oh no, not integrate this 
needs to be optimized. Alright, so now, so we are going to define water pressure because here we are looking um, for the function of water pressure, or not water pressure, partial pressure of the water vapor in order to find the mole fraction of the water moving down the column. So we will define PV T. Now in order to find the partial pressure of the water, we're going to use Anton's equation here. We're going to find the pressure and we're going to raise that to the power of 10. So we have 8.07, 1730, 233. So 10 raised to the 8.07131 minus that 1730.63. Um, then that's going to be divided by that 233.426. Uh, plus that temperature function minus 273.15 and that's the Anton's equation. In order to get that into the correct units, we're going to divide by 760 times 101.325 and then to make sure that we have the correct number 373.15 Okay, and then now we can begin inputting our variables, which are here. Okay, so we have the heat transfer coefficient as 10, and then we know that the gas constant is going to be equal to 8.314. Um, and then we also know that the density of air is equal to um, density of air, I believe it's 1.2. And then the specific heat of the air is 1000. And then the specific heat of the water vapor, or water gas, will be 2,000. And then the specific heat of the liquid will be equal to that 4,190 for the water. And then we also have our heat of vaporization. So our heat of vaporization is going to be equal to 40,700. 40, and then now we can calculate the mass transfer coefficient. So mass transfer coefficient is equal to the heat transfer coefficient divided by the density of water or air I meant. times the specific heat of that air. And then we also know that that specific area is 5 meters squared per cubic meter. And then the molecular weight of water is equal to 18 times 10 to the negative third. And the molecular weight of the air is equal to that 29 times 10 to the negative third. And then, what else do we have? Okay, and then we know that the velocity of the inlet is 5 meters per second, and we know that the 
uh, flow rate of the water. That's the velocity of the air. Flow rate of the water is 0 0.5. And then we know that the pressure is atmospheric, 101.325. And we know the height of the tower is equal to 20 meters. Now what we want to do is we want to create a plot that goes from 0 to 20 from the top of the column to the bottom of the column. In order to do that, we're going to use a uh, z-plot. It's equal to np dot lens space starting from 0 going to the height of the tower with 21 points. That way everything is spaced out by 1. And then now we are just looking at our inlet feeds. Okay. So the temperature of the water feed is equal to 70 plus 273.15 to get that into Kelvin. The temperature of the air feed is equal to tw oops, 25 plus 273.15 to get that one into Kelvin, and then the mole fraction of the feed. Now this will be done because we know the relative humidity. So it'll be 0 0.5 times the function PV that we defined up here, partial pressure, um, of the temperature of the air feed, and that is going to be divided by the total pressure. Uh, no, total pressure. And then we also know that the air flow rate uh, is equal to the total pressure times the molecular weight of the air over the gas constant times the temperature of the air feed times the, oops, the velocity of the air. Okay, now moving on. So now we want to determine when these converge. So we are going to define converge feed. We want the air, the temperature, and the mole fraction. And we want the mole fraction at the exit equal to V2 of that first value and the um, temperature of the gas at the exit be equal to that second value. And then now we want to start using our differential equation. So we need to input um, the dy dt of the water and the gas. So we're going to define um, dy tw and t gas z and v, where y, the mole fraction will be equal to that first value, and the temperature of the water will be equal to that second value, and the temperature of the gas will be equal to that third value. Now, we can start using our equations that we defined in the last section of this video. So, NW is equal to KC divided by R divided by temperature of the gas times uh, the partial pressure of the water minus 
picture of the pair. And then we know that the dy value is equal to negative a, that specific volume, or specific area, times the average molecular weight divided by the total gas flow rate um, times that nw term. We also know that the d dt of the water is going to be equal to A divided by the flow rate divided by the specific heat of the liquid uh, multiplied by the heat transfer coefficient and the temperature difference of the gas minus the water and that is all going to be subtracted by the heat of vaporization times the NW term. And then we also can determine the DT of the gas flow rate um, as equal to oops, gas flow rate as equal to the specific area times the heat transfer coefficient divided by G divided by the specific heat of the gas times the difference in oops, difference in temperature from the gas and the water. So those are our differential equations. Now as we see we have some unde undefined variables here so we will start defining those as well. So first off in order to find This here is of the air. So in order to find the overall flow rate, G, we first need the G of the water. Then that will be equal to the mole fraction divided by 1 minus the mole fraction um, multiplied by the flow rate of the air multiplied by the molecular weight of the water divided by the molecular weight of the air. And then we know that the total is just going to be the addition of the two. And then now we need to know the average molecular weight and that will be equal to the flow rate of the air times, or nope, that's actually going to be plus the flow rate of the water. That's going to be divided by the flow rate of the air over the mass, molecular weight of the air, plus the flow rate of the water over the molecular weight of the water. And then we also need to define the specific heat of the gas. So that can be equal to the specific heat of the air times the flow rate of the air plus the specific heat of the water the heat of the water times the flow rate of the water. That's going to be divided by the total flow rate. And those are all of our variables. So now we have all of our differential equations. So now we want to return um, be dy dtw d d t g so now we returned those differential equations and now we want to use the solve initial value problem so 
Equal rate. The solution is equal to solve IVP of the function dy, tw, and tg um, from zero to the height when the method that we want or not. Now we need the y sub zero, so that'd be y exit be y exit and then tw of the feed and exit and then our method will be equal to the write a u method as a preference and then after that the dense output we want to be true and then in order to get um, the values of the y exit the water, the feed, and the uh, temperature of the gas exit. We want two dot. We want the uh, solution from the uh, z plot. And then we return and we're going to use all be the first value from the last minus y feed and solve be the third value from the end and that will give us our values from the differential equations. Now we want to minimize them to determine the actual values. So we will use root, and then the function will be the converge function. And then here we need initial guesses for that. So first we have to go up here and enter our initial guesses. So we'll say y exit guess is equal to the ya feed. We'll say that it's adjusted by 1.1 and then we need t of the gas exit guess and we'll, we will say that TA feed is adjusted by 5. We'll run that. Then we come down here. And now when we have our initial value, we will use Y exit guess and TG exit guess. And that should give us Okay. There it is. No. I A R misspelled one of the G errors. So there it is. A I R. We run that. And then we rerun this, and there's our solution. So there's the solution there. And then now we want to plot the how the mole fraction changes through the column, the temperature of the water changes through the column, and the temperature of the air changes through the column. So we want to create a figure. It's equal to make 
subplots where the rows are equal to 3 and the columns are equal to 1. Now we will fig and scatter where x is equal to z plot and y is equal to the solution. Um, of that first, oops, that first term um, for the mole fraction of water will be that first term, and we want every term after that, so it goes throughout the column. And then we are going to name that as the mole fraction of the water, and we want the row to be 1 and the column to be 1. So that will give us how the mole fractions of water change through that column. Now we want to do that same thing for the temperature of the water and the temperature of the air. So we are going to paste this down and we're just going to change these values. So that will be the temperature of the water and the temperature of the air. So then now the name goes temperature water this is the temperature of the air or temperature of the gas. And then this one will be row two and row three. And then we also want to also want to adjust the plot to make sure the height and the width are good. So we will fig dot update layout with the width be equal to 600, should be good, and the height will be equal to 900, should be good. Now, we will run that. Alright, let's see where we go. Soul is not defined. Okay, that is because here, in order to get soul out of this function, we must enter in global soul. And then now we can restart and run it all. And that should give us... Yep, there we go. And here are our graphs. So as you can see, this is the mole fraction at the top of the column where the water is being inputted, like in the diagram on the whiteboard. So you can see the mole fraction is high, and as the mole fraction of that water uh, keeps going down the column, it goes closer, or it gets lower because of the evaporation of the water transferred into the air of that mass transfer. And then here, we have the temperature of the water. So the temperature of the water is hot going into the column, and as it goes down the column and heat of vaporization, that water evaporates, the temperature of the water will decrease, thus cooling that water. And then on the flip side, as the water goes into the column, um, so here is the bottom of the column, so as it enters, that air is going to be cooler than the water, and as that air moves up the column, it, it increases in temperature. And as you can see, this goes relatively to 300 degree Kelvin, and this also goes relatively to somewhere around 300 degree Kelvin. That being said, the temperature of the air and the temperature of the water, so the exit temperature of the air and the exit temperature of the water are roughly going to be the same degree. And that is the summary of this problem. Thank you.